You are listening to Reverend Insanity by Gu Jinren translated and edited by For the Love of Gu. If you enjoyed listening, make sure to like and subscribe to receive updates when new episodes come out. Chapter 205 Sleeping on Treetops The river tide receded. It was getting late. The last light of dusk shone upon the blood-soaked sandy shore where hundreds of six-legged croc bodies piled up into a giant mound. Fan Yuan casually squatted down next to a huge slain beast. Not even once throughout the fight did he think about running away. Though he was only rank 1 initial stage, he had by Ning Bing who was rank 3 peak stage to fight for him. By pairing her rank 3 cultivation level with his rank 3 goo bugs, they had managed to defeat this hundred beast crocodile float. Now relying on the external pressure to keep Bai Ning Bing on her toes while he re-educated her, Fan Yuan was also pressured to find more goo bugs for himself. I am only rank 1 initial stage, but with my newly acquired grade A aptitude and the heavenly primeval treasured lotus, my primeval essence recovery speed should be sufficient for me to use rank 2 goo bugs. Too bad, neither crocodile strength goo nor dorsal armor goo is a good match for me right now. With his rank 3 goo bug, the heaven canopy goo, already lent out to Bai Ning Bing, Fan Yuan was indeed in grave need of a suitable defensive goo bug for himself. Sadly, the dorsal armor goo could only protect his back, which was a very limited area. The crocodile strength goo, regardless of its rarity, was not a good goo for Fang Yuan either. His body already had two boar strengths added, and more would only cause him harm. Under rank 6, goo master's bodies were merely those of mortals which had limited capacity and, therefore, could not be strengthened indefinitely. And since Fang Yuan had already used the black and white boar goo to add two boar strengths to his own, adding another crocodile strength would only cause him to injure himself, so until he could find some support type goo bugs to reinforce his body, using any more strength goo would be purely suicidal. By Goo Mountain's inheritance had a jade bone goo that can increase the durability of one's bones. After using this goo, I can then add on another crocodile strength without any side effects. Too bad by Goo Mountain is still too far away. It is going to take at least 10-15 days of travel. Looking into the far southeast, Fang Yuan's wills collided and called out the crocodile strength goo, then he gave it to Bai Ning Bing, at the same time took back his heavenly primeval treasured lotus. Take this crocodile strength goo, it will let you gain one crocodile strength. The process is a bit strenuous and will take a month of constant daily use to achieve. Barely paying attention to his words, Bai Ning Bing just quietly nodded, trying hard not to reveal her excitement. This strength goo could finally address her long-standing weakness. Having been on the look for such a goo the whole time she was in the Bai clan, Bai Ning Bing could not have imagined that it would be out here, in the wilderness, that she found the goo she had ever wanted. The outside world was indeed abundant with dangers and opportunities. We need to go. The mountain barrier has collapsed and the scent of blood will soon make this place teeming with wild animals. This place is not safe to camp anymore. By Ning Bing agreed. Before they left, he made sure to stock up on crocodile meat and blood in the two seed of flour. Crocodile strength goo needed crocodile meat to eat, and fresh blood could be fed to the blood skull goo and blood moon goo. Night came and the twinkling stars lit up the black curtain. The rocky mountain cliff, crumbled from the collision with the ursine croc king, was now easy to climb. When Fan Yuan and Bai Ning Bing made it to the top, in front of them was a dense forest that expanded all the way to the blurry mountains far away. Who knew how many dangers were lurking in its depth? The forest was giving off some eerie sounds, too muffled to differentiate where from. The two teenagers looked at one another, both understood the danger they might face in the forest after dark, but they had no choice but to step forward. 
Let's go. Fan Yuan gestured at Bai Ning Bing to lead the way. Exhausted, but having no choice but to comply, she gritted her teeth furiously, stepped forward, and opened up a path for him. They were still close to the river, so the soil was wet and soft. Under such conditions, moss thrived, covering up everything beneath a lush green blanket. The deeper into the forest they got, the colder it felt. Fan Yuan was doing fine, but Bai Ning Bing was starting to shiver. Having engaged in an intense battle against an entire crocodile float and a beast king, she was still drenched in sweat and the sudden drop in temperature was giving her chills. Hey, how about we make camp and build a fire? Build a fire? Ha ha. Don't you feel that this forest is a bit too quiet? Why don't you stop and take a look at those trees in the front there? Bai Ning Bing looked and saw that, unlike before, a lot of the trees standing in front of them now were short and stout, with roots spreading into circles around their bases. Each of their vines had only one pair of gigantic leaves opening wide like two halves of a clamshell, patiently waiting for the unfortunate prey. Beast Trap Trees Bai Ning Bing recognized the plant from her clan school's teachings. These carnivorous trees had transmuted their branches into vines with only one pair of modified leaves. Apex predators that they were, beast trap trees could strike with lightning speed and, just as quickly, swallow their prey whole, then spend tens of days or even several months to digest. By name being counted, there were at least 30, no, 40 beast trap trees here, with ordinary trees and shrubs growing in between them. This is a beast trap tree forest, which explains the dead silence. But no matter, with the power of rank 3 do, I can force my way out. The most important thing for us to do right now is to find a safe place to camp for the night. The way I see it, this patch of beast trap tree forest will do just fine. We might not find any better place if we pass this by. Fang Yuan shook his head. By Ning Bing, baffled, couldn't help but disagree. What? Here, in this hungry patch of forest? Safe? Fan Yuan gave her a quick glance but didn't answer. Instead, he turned around, going back the way they came from. Still angry, Bai Ning Bing had no choice but to follow him back to the river shore. There, he chose two of the larger crocodile corpses, cut open their bellies and removed all internal organs, then washed the entire cavity thoroughly with water before dragging them both back to the beast trap tree forest patch. What kind of idea? Bai Ning Bing gasped, awed by the amount of creative thinking that must have been involved to create such an outlandish plan. Humans are the spirits of everything. Human wisdom is unlimited. Peculiar survival techniques are only common. We shall stay here tonight. Finishing his last few words, he then crawled into the hollowed-out six-legged croc. Once inside, Fan Yuan rolled and pushed it toward a beast trap. Like a deadly viper, the vine closest to him pounced, closing its big leaves around the crocodile's body, swallowing it whole. With its prey now fully secured, the vine then pulled the enclosed leaf cage up to the treetop. Hurry up and sleep, we have a long way to go tomorrow. Came Fang Yuan's voice from between the leaves. The sun had completely set behind the mountains, and darkness descended, followed by the night wind blowing through the trees sounding like someone sobbing. Following Fang Yuan's example, Bai Ning Bing got inside the dead croc's body he made for her and rolled it under a different beast trap tree. Almost instantly, she felt the corpse grabbed by something and then pulled straight up. Finally, the ascension stopped and Bai Ning Bing could finally just lie there, inside a slain beast's belly, which was in turn devoured by another predator. Through the cracks between the leaves, she peeked outside and saw the starry night sky. It was a clear night, and the twinkling starlights were like mischievous little children winking back at her. Looks like our luck ain't bad. The sky is filled with stars. It will be good weather tomorrow. Came Fan Yuan's voice from outside. Bai Ning Bing didn't reply. 
She tossed and turned, trying to get herself comfortable, but the ice-cold dead body seemed to insist on keeping it bone-chilling. She sniffed. There was that sweet aroma that Fan Yuan told her about, the smell of the beast trap tree digestive liquid. It would take at least three months for the solution to completely dissolve a body of such size, so for tonight, inside the belly of the beast, by Ning Bing was indeed safe. All right, let's use crocodile strength goo first, then I can sleep. Thinking that in her head, by Ning Bing suddenly felt like her eyelids were as heavy as mountains, and the much-needed sleep came without any resistance. After spending the past five days drifting over turbulent water, then fighting against an entire crocodile float, even slaying their beast king, she was completely drained. Through combat, she had developed beyond her physical limitation and started digging into her unearthed potential. More importantly, the shock from being turned into a woman, together with the pressure from Fang Yuan's manipulation, had exhausted both her body and mind. Inside the other crocodile's belly, Fang Yuan had not yet gone to sleep. Calling out the Tusita flower, he took out several thick wool coats. Some, he used as mats. Others, he used as blankets. Though it made things a bit more cramped inside the six-legged croc, the lingering warmth was enough to make the cold dead body a cozy shelter amid this leafy prison. With some stamina left, Fang Yuan closed his eyes and focused within, activating his primeval essence to nurture the aperture's wall. Although he no longer had the liquor bug to enhance his primeval essence's quality, having both the heavenly primeval treasured lotus and a grade A aptitude could hugely increase how long he could spend nurturing his aperture. The vast primeval sea was going through rapid rising and falling, constantly washing on the aperture's wall, with every single drop used immediately replenished. Fan Yuan could keep this going all night if he so chose to, but even this type of meditation could not replace sleep, so he stopped around after midnight and dozed off. His ears never stopped listening, from the howls of both wind and beasts, to the sounds of beast trap trees snatching their numerous prey. These animals were attracted by the smell of blood from the river bank and had traveled great distances to get here, only to be snatched by this patch of carnivorous forest. Chapter 206 Becoming the Leader Sun was high and in the dense forest by the Huanglong River, the beast trap treetops were now all crowded with hanging leaf cages like clams gathering by the water edge after rain, one of which then suddenly shook hard. A scarlet moan blade shot out from inside, cutting the leaf cage open. A young teenage girl dressed in pale clothes cautious emerged. There was white light armor encasing around her entire body. She meticulously tossed between several different branches before coming down from the tree that had held her. The tree showed no response, once again confirming what Fang Yuan had told her last night was true. Beast trap trees do not attack their escaped prey because anything that can break out is most likely too dangerous for it to handle. These trees might not be intelligent, but they had evolved instincts to best adapt to their environment. A Joe! By Ning Bing couldn't hold back a sneeze as she was scanning the area. The beast trap forest had transformed overnight. Most of the trees were now adorned with loaded leaf cages. Seems like the smell of blood attracted a lot of wild animals here last night. These trees hit the jackpot. Thinking so as she performed her morning stretches, by Ning Bing was having dark circles under her eyes, not feeling well at all. It was so cold last night that despite her absolute exhaustion, she still woke up several times. Now standing under the warm sunlight, expelling the cold chi from her body, she finally felt somewhat better. By Ning Bing, let me out. There came a voice, none other than Fang Yuan's. He didn't need the earthly hearing ear grass to hear her movements. By Ning Bing looked at the leaf cage holding Fang Yuan, quietly smirked, and decided to take her time. She stewed him for over 15 minutes before finally casually shooting down the hanging leaf cage, then walked to the fallen prison and opened it up with the blood moan goo. What took you so long? 
I woke up ages ago and have even managed to squeeze in some meditation time. Having put away the thick clothes he used last night, Fan Yuan was looking extremely refreshed and well-rested, almost as if the sleeping condition did not affect him at all. By Ning Bing snorted, not happy with what she saw, given they were supposedly sleeping under the same condition, yet here she was, cold, hungry, and still largely sleep-deprived. It's getting late, we still have a long way to go. Let's eat first. Fan Yuan spitted out the two-seater flour and took out his cooking supplies. Before long, a pot of hot meat soup was bubbling. From a patch of moss growing on a beast trap tree, he plucked a handful of these dry, thin, dark purple mushrooms and threw them all into the boiling soup. Seeing that got by Ning Bing suspicious immediately. You cannot just eat random herbs in the wild like that. They might be poisonous. Yup, you are right then. Eat it, don't eat it, it's your choice. If you get poisoned, I have no healing goo bug to save you. Bai Ning Bing laughed coldly, but Fan Yuan remained indifferent about it. He then grabbed the ladle and took a huge sip of the hot soup, all while under her watchful eyes. She grunted in disapproval only to conclude that the soup must not be poisonous after his sixth helping. Finally taking a ladle to try for herself, Bai Ning Bing was immediately blown away by how delicious it was. The exquisite flavors must have come from these shriveled-looking mushrooms as there was no other new ingredient, she thought. Giving Fang Yuan a quizzical look, Bai Ning Bing couldn't help but feel awed by him, though she probably would think differently if she were to know that he had used extra clothes to keep warmth last night. Fang Yuan felt Bai Ning Bing looking at him but did not move his head to respond, just kept eating his food. Bai Ning Bing was a complex person. On one hand, she was like a baby, young and pure. With the fatal threat from the northern abyss ice soul physique temporarily lifted, it was like she was given a new chance at life, which only made her appreciate life even more. However, ever since the battle on Qing Mao Mountain, by Ning Bing deliberately saving him had allowed Fang Yuan to see her true demonic nature. Demons were the ones who doggedly pursued their own paths, so they were all assertive and adamant. Bai Ning Bing was a true demon, bound to always unapologetically seek excitement in her life, and never to be the one to deny herself, and never to act with restraints. She had no fear of death, and if only it was exciting enough, she would not hesitate to head toward her own demise. People like Bai Ning Bing were like baby dragons, filled with curiosity, pride, and untamable temperament. She walked on her own path, with her own ambitions and goals, and though she had not yet matured into the demon lord that she was meant to be, merely a demonling at this moment, the true demon inside her will never change ways nor submit to anyone. True demons were loyal only to themselves. In the dark, they walked alone. True demons could feel respect for others, but never would they bow down to anyone. True demons were all kings of their own domains, the pinnacle of existence. Fan Yuan understood by Ning Bing the same way he understood himself, but her being stubborn did not mean she could not be manipulated to do his bidding. If he was still rank 3, he would not have any need for her, but since he was reduced to rank 1, his need for Bai Ning Bing's assistance had greatly increased. The young demon Ling was smart and full with pride, so it would take lots of, not force, but time, to grind away her resistance. It was not out of pettiness that Fan Yuan hid the robes he used last night from Bai Ning Bing nor was it out of generosity that he chose not to complain about her not saving him quick enough earlier. It will take a lot of time to subdue Bai Ning Bing, but I'm in no rush at the moment. What's most important is to get back to rank 3 as quickly as possible. By the time they had finished their meal, it was already almost noon. Heading southeast, the pair continued on the path that Bai Ning Bing cleared out yesterday. The deeper they went, the taller the trees got. The four meters tall beast trap trees were soon replaced by their taller peers, and before long, the two could even see the looming tree kings towering above the rest, like a majestic crane standing among a flock of chickens. There were also trees that had fallen, buried under a layer of moss. 
Some were dying from parasitic shoots growing buds on their vines, others were even killed by lightning strikes. The deep forest was not without noises, with deers, foxes, and rabbits constantly running around. From time to time, they could even hear the roars of tigers from afar. With the help of the earthly hearing ear grass, Fang Yuan could easily avoid most threats, only relying on Bai Ning Bing to force her way through when absolutely necessary. Eventually, it was dark again, so they stopped and set up camp. Bone tired, Bai Ning Bing fell asleep lying on a hard rock. The next morning she woke up with a stiff neck and sore muscles, undoubtedly from a cold. Fan Yuan noticed what was going on, but continued their travel without saying any word about it. Without transportation goo bugs, their journey was long and arduous, which Fan Yuan made full use of by spending every free seconds of the day meditating. A few days later, Bai Ning Bing finally broke down and had a fever. Before long, she became delirious, barely able to walk, let alone fight. Fan Yuan had no choice but to stop and help Bai Ning Bing with medicines he packed in the two-seater flower. Still, it took six full days before Bai Ning Bing finally got better. Getting sick in the wilderness was an experience she could never forget, not even able to move on her own, having to rely on Fan Yuan for help with everything. Had it not been for Fan Yuan, I'd have been dead. Though it was the truth, Bai Ning Bing did not want to admit it. From then on, she became even more untalkative, often going on for half a day without uttering a word. As her voice diminished, Fang Yuan's voice gained authority, gradually making him the leader of the group.